All the time in the NBA, we talk about awful contracts. Contracts that players sign and then they get hurt or they don't perform as well and the team ends up paying a ton of money out to underperforming players. But sometimes it happens the other way as well. Players end up losing out on hundreds of millions of dollars because of injuries, because of poor contract decisions and everything in between. And that is what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. First up on the list is an absolutely brutal one. I've done an entire video on this years ago and it's Isaiah Thomas of the Boston Celtics. He gets traded to Boston and becomes a second team all NBA caliber player. In the 2016-17 season, he finished fifth in MVP voting. It was one of the better guards in the entire league, despite only being five foot nine, despite not being a great defender at all, probably the worst defender in the league. He was incredible offensively for a Boston team that needed a lot of offensive production. Not only that, going into the postseason that year, he was dealing with a hip injury that he decided to play through and he tragically lost his sister as well during that postseason and played through all of that for the Celtics really endeared himself to the fan base and once that season was over it was assumed that he was going to be getting a contract offer worth in excess of 100 150 maybe even 200 million dollars keep in mind second team all NBA fifth in MVP voting like this is not a guy that yes he ended up being you know the 60th pick in the draft and bounced around to a couple of different teams but you don't make second team all NBA by accident and he had the opportunity to earn a big contract, but the mistake that he made was playing through that injury because he ends up getting moved to Cleveland in the Kyrie Irving deal. He's hurt at the time of the trade. They have to add more compensation to the trade just to get it to go through, then later gets moved to the Lakers and has just been a minimum contract player basically ever since that postseason. And had he not played through that hip injury, had he had the surgery, had he recovered from the injury properly, he could have made at least $100 million on his, on his following contract, but he chose not to. And ultimately, it cost him a ton of money. Second team all NBA and possible, you know, $100 million contract to minimum contract player is a really, really upsetting situation and one that I know that a lot of players around the league were upset about, about you know, at Boston for treating him the way that they did and him ultimately losing out on that much money. Next up now, this one is entirely on the player and the agent, and it is Nerlens Noel. So he's the sixth overall pick as a part of the process. Sixers never really fits in super well with what they have going on. They end up moving him to Dallas, and Dallas has always needed a player exactly like what Nerland Noel was supposed to be, a rim runner, a defender, a rebounder, that Tyson Chandler type mold, right? He gets traded to Dallas, and once he's there, they offer him a contract. It's been disputed what's actually offered, but somewhere in the 58 to $70 million range on a four-year deal. So a sizable second contract for a player to that point. Looked like a really good defensive player, but hadn't proved a ton offensively. And Nerland Noel and his agent at the time, Rich Paul, looked at that offer and said, no, we'll pass. We'll wait out for a better offer. Then he gets benched by Dallas, doesn't play particularly well, and a couple of months later, he's signing minimum contracts with various teams around the league over the following few seasons. And to lose out on that much money is obviously a disaster. Disaster so much to the point that Nerlens Noel sued Rich Paul, his agent, for advising him against taking that contract and waiting out for money, a lawsuit that ultimately he lost. That's the kind of stuff we're talking about here. Players moving, losing out on tens of millions of dollars. One contract decision by Nerlens Noel caused him to lose out on a ton of earning potential. Next up now is a really sad one, and it is is DeMarcus Cousins. Now, when he was in Sacramento, DeMarcus Cousins was arguably one of the best players in the league, certainly offensively, but he also had plenty of issues off the court and, and temperament issues and all these different things. Sacramento didn't have the typical franchise player there in DeMarcus Cousins, and he had a contract, uh, you know, situation where he could have made up to 200, maybe even a little, a little bit over $200 million on a max contract. And just as a player, DeMarcus Cousins was absolutely worth that. However, all the other stuff combined together, Sacramento just decided to dump them. They're like, we don't want to deal with this guy. We'd rather trade him and move on from the situation. So they trade him to New Orleans in a bit of a surprising trade. And so had things just worked out in New Orleans, you could easily see DeMarcus Cousins getting $100, $150 million. That's the caliber player that he was. He goes to New Orleans and things go pretty well. Like him and Anthony Davis playing together, that started to work. It started to look like a really interesting situation, possibly a situation that could have kept Anthony Davis in New Orleans. And then DeMarcus Cousins tears his Achilles. The Pelicans offer him a two-year $40 million contract. He declines that and ends up signing a one-year five Five million dollar mid-level exception deal with the Golden State Warriors. Everybody freaks out thinking that that was the last piece of the puzzle for the Warriors. A complete super team. Uh, and then DeMarcus Cousins just ends up becoming a minimum contract player over the next couple of seasons. So this one, more than anything, was injury related. Like, yes, DeMarcus Cousins had his issues in Sacramento and early in his career, but he's still talented enough to earn a ton of money. But once you tear your Achilles and then you turn down the, the you know, a $20 million a year deal uh, you know, annually from New Orleans, then things just went completely downhill for DeMarcus Cousins. Next up now is one that people don't really talk about for whatever reason. It is Victor Oladipo with the Indiana Pacers. In his time with the Pacers, Oladipo becomes an all-NBA caliber player.
player. He comes over in the Paul George trade, plays really well, really good two-way player. And in his time in Indiana, was offered a contract over $100 million. He's disputed this publicly in terms of what was and it wasn't actually offered, but it's been heavily reported somewhere in the four years to 100 to 112 million dollar range for Victor Oladipo, but he didn't really see a championship level future in Indiana, so he struggled to commit to the team. He ultimately ends up as a part of the James Harden trade in Houston, and then a couple months later ends up in Miami, where he now still is, and has just been signing minimum contracts to remain in Miami. Goes from a hundred and hundred and twelve potentially million dollar deal to minimum contracts, and that was after, by the way, that contract offer was after he did deal with some injury issues and some declining play. They were still willing to bet on him turning his career around. He bet on himself and as has been the theme of this video, lost out on millions and millions of dollars. Speaking of that, next on the list is Dennis Schroeder. This is the famous one. So when he ended up leaving the Lakers and going to Boston in free agency, he reportedly turned down a four-year $84 million contract offer from the Lakers and then ends up in Boston on a, on a mid-level exception deal. Is now back with the Lakers, but again, has been a minimum contract or a mid-level exception contract level player for the rest of his career since. Now, he's disputed that that offer was ever on the table. It seems like a pretty big number, even for as well as Schroeder did play the prior season for the Lakers, but that's another big one where you just look at it and you say, I'm a better myself and you lose out on a ton of money. However, let's talk about someone that didn't just turn down a ton of money because of a contract decision and actually lost out on money because of poor play. Yeah, that player is Montrez Harrell. Remember when Montrez Harrell signed a free agent contract once again with the Lakers for the mid-level exception, leaving the Clippers to go to LA and everybody thought, what just happened? How did the Lakers just add Montrez Harrell with the mid-level exception? Well, what had happened was the Clippers were up 3-1 in the bubble in 2020 and then they lost a 3-1 lead. Montrez Harrell looked awful in the postseason. He was a a great bench player. This was the, the version of the Clippers that still had, you know, a, a lot of depth and he was arguably the best bench player in the entire league, six man of the year caliber kind of guy and a really good offensive player, really productive. People thought he was going to get a contract in the 10, 12, 13, 14, maybe even $15 million a year range. And so it was heavily anticipated that going into that postseason, he was going to perform well and continue to earn that. And then he got exposed as basically just a regular season player and someone whose defensive abilities just could not keep up in the postseason and ended up signing that mid-level exception deal with the Lakers and has basically been on that level of compensation ever since. I remember everybody being very, very surprised about what Montrezl Harrell got in free agency, even after playing so poorly in the postseason and had that postseason never occurred for whatever reason, again, keep in mind it was the bubble, I think he would have gotten a significantly higher contract uh, and, and reportedly turned down a higher contract as well from the Hornets to sign with the Lakers and ultimately that turned out to be a poor decision. Last up now on the list, I want to put one that many people don't remember. Who remembers Shabazz Muhammad for the Minnesota Timberwolves? A highly thought of high school player, uh, one and done player at UCLA, ends up being a pretty solid NBA player, right? A high draft pick, first round pick. And a couple years into his career, gets offered $40 million by the Minnesota Timberwolves. I believe it was on a four-year deal. Nothing crazy, but they wanted to retain him as a young player that could continue to grow and improve as a, as a perimeter scorer. He turns it down. He's like, nah, I'm not, you know, I'm a, I'm a former top, uh, you know, top first round pick. I need more money than this. And then ultimately, a couple months later, he signs a one-year deal to return to Minnesota. And it's just, it's a big disaster for him because he, he never got an opportunity to make anything close to that much money ever again in his career. And again, I think it comes off of this, this idea that he thought he was going to be one of the better players in the league as a top high school and college player. Uh, lost out on $40 million, which doesn't sound like a lot in comparison to these other guys, but he never was going to get it. Like, Montrezl Harrell can continue to earn contracts. Dennis Schroeder can continue to earn contracts. Uh, Shabazz Muhammad was out of the league a couple years after this and lost out, as I said, on $40 million. Let me know down in the comment section below some other guys throughout history that have lost out on a ton of money you want me to cover potentially in a future video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.